true Reddit horror stories. Prepare for three gripping stories. A peaceful fishing trip turns chilling when an intrusive stranger disrupts, testing resilience and preparedness. In 1985, a Greek soldier's ghostly encounter during a midnight guard shift becomes the legendary ghostly guardian of the Greek army camp. Dive into the world of online dating as a woman's date takes a sinister turn, emphasizing the importance of personal safety. Stay tuned for these thrilling tales with unexpected twists. A day on the river, a fishing trip turned terrifying. As the morning sun cast its warm glow over the tranquil river, Mary and her friends embarked on what they had hoped would be a peaceful day of fly fishing. Little did they know that their idyllic outing would soon take a sinister turn, plunging them into a harrowing ordeal they would never forget. Mary, a 24-year-old outdoor enthusiast, was no stranger to the soothing allure of nature. Her passion for fishing had drawn her and her friends to a secluded spot along the riverbank. Though usually a hidden gem known to only a few, this weekend's Labor Day holiday had attracted more people than they were accustomed to. Nevertheless, they were determined to make the most of their day. Four friends, bound by their love for the sport, set out to scatter along the riverbank, each finding their perfect spot. Mary had her gear laid out meticulously near the water's edge, ready to cast her line into the inviting river. Unbeknownst to her, fate had a different plan for this day. A stranger, seemingly harmless at first glance, decided to make himself comfortable right next to Mary's setup. He placed his belongings nearby and casually unfolded a chair, invading her personal space without hesitation. Mary, focused on the serene beauty of the river, paid little attention to the man's intrusion. It wasn't long before the man broke the silence, initiating an unwelcome conversation. He introduced himself, and Mary reluctantly shared her name, keeping her responses brief. Small talk was not her forte, and she struggled to find common ground with this stranger. A gesture of camaraderie soon turned into an uncomfortable exchange. The man, without hesitation, asked for a beer from their ice chest, a request Mary found rather rude. In her group, offering a beer was a customary way to make friends, but it was typically initiated by them, not demanded. This intrusion was a red flag, but Mary decided to give him one in the spirit of the holiday. As Mary cast her line into the river, the man remained uncomfortably close, standing just five feet away. He continued to chatter relentlessly, leaving Mary with little choice but to listen. Feeling increasingly uneasy, she started inching away from him in a desperate bid for personal space. However, the man persisted, closing in on Mary and escalating the situation by making crude and inappropriate comments. His questions took a disturbing turn, probing into her personal life and making her feel violated. Do you have a boyfriend? He asked, to which Mary responded with humor. I'll probably be a lesbian after this. Innocence lost, the man continued. Are you wearing a push-up bra? Mary, wearing fishing waders, couldn't fathom how he could have made such an inaccurate assumption. When was the last time you, you know, did the dirty? He inquired. Mary, determined not to be intimidated, replied. Probably more recently than you did. The man's questions grew more explicit as he asked, What's the biggest you've ever had? Mary, her patience waning, retorted, In this river, about a ten-pound largemouth. Duh, I know what you mean, and I'm not biting. The final straw came when he suggested, You want to go and have some fun? Mary had had enough and decided to move downstream to where her male friend was fishing. She confided in him about the unsettling encounter, and he prepared to intervene, but by the time he arrived, the intrusive man had vanished into the wilderness. Relieved to be away from the unsettling stranger, they were able to enjoy the rest of their day in relative peace. As the sun began its descent, they gathered their gear and headed back to the parking lot of the fly shop where they had started their adventure. The process of transporting their equipment took nearly an hour, and during that time, Mary noticed that the creepy stranger had not left the area. She confided in her friend once again, but this time she hesitated to involve him or their other friend. She feared the situation might escalate, especially given the imposing stature of the stranger, 
who stood at an imposing six feet four inches. After parting ways for a brief respite, they planned to reconvene later to cook their catch. Alone in the parking lot, Mary's anxiety grew as she changed out of her fishing gear. Suddenly, the stranger appeared, causing her heart to race. He made crude remarks about her appearance, and the situation took a terrifying turn. Feeling cornered and threatened, Mary took matters into her own hands. She reached into her truck and retrieved her pistol, pointing it at the ground as a warning to the aggressor. She had no choice but to defend herself. The stranger, caught off guard by Mary's resolve, quickly backtracked, claiming he was only joking. He hastened his retreat, disappearing into the tree line. Mary stood there, boots, shorts, and a sports bra, holding a .45 caliber pistol, protecting herself from the looming danger. With a newfound sense of strength and determination, Mary drove away, surprisingly composed given the ordeal she had just faced. However, as the adrenaline subsided, she pulled over and succumbed to tears. Crying was not something she often did, but this experience had shaken her to the core. Stopping at a gas station on her way home, she spotted a wildlife and fisheries agent. With courage and conviction, she recounted the harrowing encounter and filed an official report. The agent assured her he would contact the sheriff's office, who promptly reached out to her the following morning, allowing her to file a separate report. While Mary understood the challenges of pursuing investigations, she couldn't shake the feeling that she had narrowly escaped a potentially life-threatening situation. She hoped that by reporting the incident, she had not only protected herself, but also prevented further harm to others. From that day forward, Mary vowed never to venture alone into potentially dangerous situations. She had learned the importance of self-defense and being prepared for the unexpected. As she continued her love affair with nature and fishing, she carried with her the indomitable spirit that had allowed her to stand up to adversity and emerge stronger on the other side. In the end, Mary's story serves as a testament to the resilience and courage of individuals who refuse to be victimized even in the face of danger. It's a reminder that strength can be found in the most unexpected places, and that sometimes the fishing trip you never planned for can be the one that changes your life forever. The Ghostly Guardian of the Greek Army Camp In the winter of 1985, a young soldier found himself stationed at a secluded Greek army camp. This soldier, only 19 years old, was part of the elite paratrooper division, a fact that would prove irrelevant to the spine-tingling tale that unfolded that fateful night. Mandatory military service had brought him to this desolate outpost in the countryside, a place far removed from civilization, with the nearest town a distant three kilometers away. The ominous events of that evening began to unfold when, during a routine rotation of guard duty, this young soldier was selected for the midnight shift. Each night, a group of five to six soldiers would be tasked with the arduous duty of guarding the camp. They shared cramped barracks and were roused from their fitful slumber half an hour before their shift was to begin. These shifts were grueling, lasting two hours each, and the most dreaded of them all was the midnight to 6 a.m. watch. The frigid winter air penetrated their uniforms, making it a constant struggle to stay awake and alert while standing sentinel beside their guard booths. To stave off the bone-chilling cold and to remain vigilant, the soldiers paced back and forth. On that particular night, the clock had just struck 2 a.m., and our young soldier was stationed beside his booth gripping an M1 Garand rifle, a relic from World War II still in service in the 1980s Greek army. The silence was oppressive, with only the mournful howling of the wind breaking the stillness. The moon, though offering some visibility, could only do so much to pierce the darkness, leaving much concealed in its shadows. The camp itself was devoid of significant vegetation, resembling more of a barren clearing than anything else. Suddenly, a tall and foreboding figure emerged from the path leading out of the nearby tree line. This ominous presence was headed directly toward the young soldier's booth. A palpable fear gripped his heart as he beheld the dark and enigmatic form. The figure moved deliberately, almost as if it were gliding, taking slow, methodical steps. It drew nearer and nearer, and the soldier's anxiety surged. 
In accordance with protocol, the soldier raised his rifle, took aim, and bellowed into the night. Stop, identify yourself. There was no response, only an eerie silence. A second time he demanded, Stop, identify yourself. Still, there was no reply, just the figure's relentless advance. In that moment, the soldier became convinced that he was facing a real-life ghost. The thought crossed his mind. Let's see if a ghost can die. Before he could take any further action, he knew he had to trigger the alarm. He shouted a code word that set off a chain reaction. The next guard in the adjacent booth, hundreds of meters away, heard the cry and relayed it. The alarm traveled from booth to booth, eventually reaching the patrol, consisting of an officer and five soldiers tasked with ensuring the guards were on duty. If any of the guards were caught sleeping or away from their post, they faced dire consequences. The patrol was also responsible for investigating alarms. However, pinpointing the exact booth that had triggered the alarm could be time-consuming, as they didn't know which one it was and might be far from the actual source. So they had to rush, running from booth to booth until they located the original alarm. As the soldier listened to the distant cries of his comrades in nearby booths, he knew the alarm had been raised. He realized that the patrol would soon arrive, but he was also acutely aware that falsely raising the alarm carried a severe penalty, imprisonment. In this context, prison meant adding a certain number of days to a soldier's service term. Military service typically lasted two years, but additional days could accumulate through penalties. Actual incarceration was reserved for more serious crimes and involved the military police. With the eerie figure now just 50 meters away, closing in relentlessly, the soldier braced himself, ready to fire. It was then that he heard a voice, cutting through the tension like a ray of light in the darkness. Relax, Nicholas. It's me. Another soldier, shrouded in a black blanket, came into view. A familiar face. This soldier had been attempting to sneak back into the camp after a night of revelry in the nearby town, unauthorized and carrying a bottle of liquor. Clearly intoxicated, he had inadvertently set off the alarm. The young soldier recognized him and allowed him to pass, fully aware that this act would likely lead to serious prison time once the patrol identified the booth responsible for the false alarm. The patrol eventually arrived and the young soldier chose not to implicate the inebriated soldier. The officer in charge simply told him that they'd see each other the next morning. The following day, as the soldiers lined up to receive their penalties from the officers, the young soldier waited nervously, anticipating the announcement of his name. To his astonishment, his name was never called, even though raising an alarm was an extremely rare occurrence. No one uttered a word about the incident. It turned out that the patrol officer and the mysterious figure were close friends. The soldier who had sneaked back into the camp divulged the entire story to the lieutenant, pleading with him not to mention the young soldier's involvement. The officer, using his influence, managed to make the entire incident vanish, as though it had never occurred. In the annals of that remote Greek army camp's history, this chilling encounter would forever remain shrouded in secrecy, shared only as a whispered tale among soldiers who had been there that fateful night. Unmasking the Dark Side of Online Dating In the heart of a bustling city where dreams and destiny collide, a curious tale unfolded that left a shiver down the spine of everyone who heard it. It all began when a 29-year-old woman, a globetrotter with a penchant for adventure, found herself in the United States for two months, seeking to add a new chapter to her life. Bored of her solitary evenings spent watching reality TV shows like 90 Day Fiancé, she decided to venture into the labyrinthine world of dating apps once more. With no clear intentions in mind, she embarked on this digital journey, yearning for the serendipity of connection. Little did she know that her decision would lead her down a path filled with unexpected twists and unsettling encounters. Amid the sea of profiles and potential suitors, she stumbled upon one man who seemed to share her interests. Their initial conversations were pleasant, and she gradually felt comfortable enough to share her phone number. As they exchanged messages over the course of a few weeks, 
A spark ignited, prompting them to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting. Their rendezvous took place in a cozy pub, where laughter mingled with the clinking of glasses. However, the first moment of uncertainty arose when she realized that the man sitting before her bore little resemblance to the images she had seen on his profile. This discrepancy was not a matter of aesthetics, but rather an unsettling feeling that the photos had been meticulously curated to present a different persona. As the night progressed, they found common ground, delving into conversations that transcended superficialities. She opened up about her life back home, sharing stories of her travels and the stark differences between her homeland and the American soil beneath their feet. Chemistry hung in the air, and as their hands intertwined, she felt a connection she hadn't anticipated. But then, as they prepared to depart, he made an invitation that sent an eerie chill down her spine. He suggested they continue the evening at his apartment, under the guise of enjoying a cup of coffee. She, however, was astute enough to decipher the underlying message, an unspoken invitation to a more intimate encounter, one she had no intention of pursuing on a first date. Her instinct served her well as she declined his initial offer. He persisted, reassuring her that it was indeed just coffee and that he would provide a ride back to her place, sparing her the need to call an Uber. With a mix of caution and curiosity, she accepted his offer, and they began the journey to his apartment just a few blocks away. But as they ascended the stairs to his unit, his demeanor took an unsettling turn. He made unsettling remarks about her being different from most girls, hinting that he might be a psychopath. His gaze dropped to her attire, making crass remarks about her physical attributes. She firmly reiterated her boundaries, making it clear that the night would not culminate in an intimate encounter. Once inside his studio apartment, the situation took an even darker turn. As he excused himself to the bathroom, she was left alone in the dimly lit room. Her eyes scanned the surroundings, and what she saw sent a surge of fear through her veins. In a corner, obscurely lit, two eerie masks caught her attention, one resembling a grotesque goat the other a sinister cat or perhaps a tiger. But what was more disconcerting were the objects within arm's reach, a bowie knife and a small woodcutter's ax. Her gaze wandered further, revealing a black jumper draped over a dresser, and on the bedside table, a pair of latex gloves rested ominously. Her instinct screamed at her, warning her of the perilous situation she might be in. With a quick and composed decision, she decided to escape this enigmatic apartment before her worst fears could materialize. She rose from the bed and silently exited the unit. Urgency gripped her as she descended the staircase and disappeared into the night, where she was fortunate enough to secure a safe ride. In hindsight, she pondered whether her actions had been justified or if she had simply misinterpreted the situation. Had she unfairly hurt his feelings? mistaking his eccentricities for malevolence? Nevertheless, she couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had enveloped her in that eerie apartment. Days passed, and she made a grim discovery. The man had either blocked her on Tinder or had deleted the app entirely, further deepening the mystery surrounding that fateful night. And so the enigma lingers, leaving us with unanswered questions and a lingering sense of unease. Did she indeed narrowly escape a sinister fate that night? Or was it merely a series of unsettling coincidences and misunderstandings? In the labyrinth of online dating, where masks and facades often conceal the truth, we may never know the full story behind that creepy Tinder date. But one thing remains certain. Trust your instincts, for they may be your most potent weapon in the unpredictable world of modern romance. Which of the stories touch you the most? Perhaps you would have a similar experience yourself, write it in the comments below the video. If you want scary stories regularly, don't forget hit the like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell, if you dare.